All right, good morning and good Monday. Uh, just a quick recap of uh, what we did last week on Friday uh, and just a continuation of the 5.5 task, learning more about geometric angles. Uh, on Friday, we talked about uh, vertical angles and we came up with the conclusion that vertical angles are congruent. You have to remember, vertical angles, what is the definition of vertical angles? Vertical angles are those angles that are across from each other. So I had you focus on your notes, uh, and we basically went through and went through the proof and said, okay, hey, one and four is a straight line, so that's, uh, if one is 100, then what is the measure of uh, angle four? If one is 100, four has to be 80, because they both form a straight line. And we just kind of continued that around the circle. If four is 80, three has to be 100, if, because three and four form a straight line. If three is 100, two has to be 80 because two and three form a straight line and it just kind of continues full circle. So uh, our conclusion there, or conjecture, conjecture, conclusion, same thing. Uh, vertical angles are, and we're gonna use that uh, equal with the squiggly above it, vertical angles are congruent, all right? So now we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about uh, an exterior angle of a triangle. And what about an exterior angle of a triangle? Well, there's an, an interesting thing that happens with the exterior angle of a triangle. From before last week, I kind of proved to you that the sum of the three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. And here was a simple proof. If I take this triangle and I rotate it about the midpoint of one of its sides, we get a parallelogram. Notice where the blue angle went. It went right next to the green angle. If I take the second, the first rotation, and I rotate it again this way, come on, get off there. Now, where does the red angle appear? The red angle appears next to the blue, and I have all three angles right here in a half a circle. They form a straight line. So the sum of the three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Yes, that's true. Well, let's just assume that these two angles, the blue angle and the red angle, form a fourth angle. And we're gonna call that the black angle, just because I have a black marker here and I have blue and red and green. So we get a, the red angle is number one, the blue angle is number two, the green angle is number three, and then we have the black angle is number four. So first thing in the morning here, I'm gonna try and do this, and I'm gonna try and give you a simple proof. And basically what this says, exterior angles. When the side of a triangle is extended, as in the diagram below, and the angle formed by the exterior, in this case the black angle, uh, the triangle is called an exterior angle. And you may want to write that down on your paper. Exterior angle. Remember how we abbreviate angle, right? That's an exterior angle. The two angles of the triangle that are not adjacent, adjacent means next to, so that would be the that would be angle one and two. They are not adjacent. Are, are referred to as remote interior angles. So these two angles are called remote interior. And you can go ahead and make note of that, remote interior angles. In the diagram, angle four is an exterior angle, already labeled, and angle one and two are the remote interior. Examine the tessellation from before, above, and looking for places where exterior angles in a triangle occur. So right here, if you examine that tessellation, this is a place where exterior angles occur, one of them, okay? Um, again, you may have some, to ignore some line segments and so on, and focus on there. Based on several examples of exterior angles in the diagram, write a conclusion about their angles. Well, I'm going to give you a proof about their angles. If we look at this and we say that the sum of these three angles add up to form a straight line, that would be true. So angle green, and I'm going to try this here, plus angle blue, let me just try and do this here, uh, how did I do that, uh, plus uh, angle red, so all of those, is, eh, I can't do that, equal 280 degrees, all right? So green, blue, and red, equal 280 degrees. 
if green, blue, and red are equal to 180 degrees, then create this as a new angle. Angle three plus angle four. Well, angle three is a green angle, right? So angle green plus my new angle, which is my fourth angle, we're gonna call that angle black, is also equal to 180 degrees, right? Okay, these two angles, these two angles form a straight line. Now remember, the black angle is the red and the blue angle put together, right? So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these two by substitution because they equal 180 degrees. I'm gonna take them and replace them over here. I'm gonna write a whole new equation. So angle green plus angle blue plus angle red equals angle green plus angle black. Here's my new equation, right? I just, by substitution, I was able to replace 180 degrees with this. Now, what, what do you see here that's kind of in common? I see angle green is in common on both sides, okay? So if angle green is in common on both sides, I'm gonna subtract angle green from both sides. And when I do, what gets left? That's the bell, don't worry about it. Angle blue plus angle red is equal to angle black, which means red and blue here is equal to this, which if I put them back over here, I know that's true, okay? So what is my conclusion? My conclusion here is that the, uh, let's just say angle one plus angle two is equal to angle four. That's, that's my conclusion. All right, angle one plus four, angle one plus two is equal to four. Now the last thing, and I gotta do this quick because I got about three and a half more minutes and the bell's gonna ring. I thought I had a little more time than this. Uh, the last thing, if you have questions on that, ask please, okay? The last thing is called uh, um, parallel lines cut by a transversal, okay? When you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal and, it, and they intersect, you have a potential for eight angles to show up. There exists a relationship between these, and we have three right here. Uh, and study these. It says angle one and five are what you call corresponding angles. This is the hardest one. Corresponding angles is the hardest one. Why? Because angle three and six, it tells you what they are. Alternate interior angles. They are on alternate sides of a transversal, and they are both interior. Angle three and five. Same side, interior. They're on the same side and they are interior. It, the names give it away with the exception of corresponding angles. So when you look at what about our conclusions are, angle one and five, imagine cutting this right here with a pair of scissors and moving these angles down here. If these two lines are parallel, one would cover up five. So angle one and angle five are congruent. There's my conclusion. Angle three and six. If I take and, again, move this group of angles down here or the bottom group of angles up here, six would go to two. What do we know about vertical angles? Vertical angles are congruent. So angle three and six are congruent. And then lastly, it has same side interior. Think about it. If I move three or this group of angles down here or up here, three would go to seven. Well, five plus three equals 180 degrees. So angle one and five angle, excuse me, three and five, which are same side interior, they equal 180 degrees. All right, so there's, there's our notes for today. That's short and sweet. Ask questions if you need to. Make sure you have your notes done. This is gonna be an assignment.